Good day again. Uh, welcome to Outback Midi Models. And another review. Review time, I guess. Um, another kit I've got in my stash. It's the Airfix Westland Lynx Mark 88A. And it actually comes with three vari variations to this thing. And um, looking, okay, why I got this kit. Um, basically, I was, uh, I was going through the Airfix Scar Modeling Step-by-Step -step magazine and in there they have a obviously an article on the photo which, and I was actually seeing the kit and this was one of the, the subjects for it and just looking through it, I'm not going to go through the whole, like the magazine itself just due to copyright and all the things that go with it but um, looking through it and yeah, I just thought it was a really nice subject, and obviously I love love my helicopters as as a model kit. Um, you just do so much to them, just weathering wise, and so I thought I'd pick this up. And obviously on the box, um, just a bit about the about the Westland Lynx, and obviously it's all more more, more artwork on the side. As far as I can zoom out, because the camera's pretty close, and it gives you three vari um, variations on the on this thing. So obviously you can build a German version. Um, you got the was it do, 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 Royal Navy, um, and obviously England 2010. You got the German ones 2006. And you got the Danish Navy Air Squadron, uh, 2009. And obviously, it's it's got the, the sizes, dimensions of of this thing. So what it basically says here, it's going to be 316 millimeters length. Uh, the width is going to be 265 mils and 330 pieces. And it's just got all the obviously the thing again, being Airfix um, partners with Humbrol. And so all the paints are humbrol. So if if you don't use humble paint paints, you're gonna have to um, match all your colours up. Probably online or something like that. I don't have a conversion chart with me, so that's something I'm gonna have to do. Um, first thing you notice is it's not originally packed because obviously when I've opened it, um, as a typical layer fix, they just cram everything in one bag and straight away I've had parts that are off the sprues float around in the bag which is a real kind of um, shame now I've got to try and find where these things go <laughs> it feels like individually bagged and these parts were floating around obviously I could find, sort of at least work out which sprue it came from and so all this stuff was down the bottom of the box too, but so I'll, straight away I've just sort of taped these up, keep the protective coating on the decals. Um, decals are printed by Cartograph. Does a nice, nice touch. I'm starting to get more kits with these decals in them. I now now know why people are sort of oh, not rave about them, but yeah, speak very highly of them. Um, nice matte, really clear, I mean like just the writing, just the writing's like very readable, you can, if you squint your eyes, I mean my eyesight's pretty bad so, yeah, obviously you get a magnifying glass, you can read it, obviously that tiny little decal there says high voltage and it's like it's just tiny. Yeah, it even says like things like footstep. So you got all your um turn this light up. Yeah, so you've got all your cockpit, um all your dash panels, decals, decals and say that'd be for the Danish the um Danish version of it. 
I believe more of the Danish yeah, the Danish flag, there you go. And you've got Royal Navy, all your German uh, markings there. And there's all your commons. Oh, it even tells you there, A, B, C, more commons. And yeah, so that's the decal sheet. Bit of advertising for the Airfix Club, which I'm not a member of because this is um, don't really buy Airfix kits. I've heard like a lot of funny things about them, but this one's a really nice kit. So, especially with all their new toolings. Now I'll get rid of this. I'll go through all the, the paperwork first before I get into the plastic. This was nice when I opened it, I was very impressed by this. These are your, your paint schemes, all nice, in nice colour. So, whoops, I've got three here, thought there was only two, obviously, which is good. Didn't, obviously didn't go through that good. So here's your, your German. Yeah, Damien asked me to pronounce that, I just... Yeah, I just sound like a complete tool if I try to read that, so sorry. Sorry for any German people out there, but yeah, that's the German version, which I think I'm going to do. Yeah, don't know why, but I just, obviously I love the German armour and German World War II aircraft as well, so that's the one I might go for, but who knows, anything can change. You know what it's like when you paint models, you sort of get halfway through the instruction, you go, hmm, that's nice. Royal Navy, nice grey. Very clear instructions, like it's you can't really go wrong with these. So hopefully, well actually not hopefully, but after seeing this kit, as I always do before my reviews, I sort of have a quick sneaky look at it. Um, instructions, obviously the assembly icon instructions here, so what these things mean throughout. Um, Obviously, assembly instructions. Basically, just read the instructions and um, yeah. So, I'm, and there's a bit more about the the links here on the front page. And you got so you got your counter piracy, you got your air sea rescue, and then you got your anti surface warfare. Um, at the moment, at this stage, I'm sort of leaning towards the anti-surface warfare. Um, yeah, it's like the front profile of the helicopter here. Yeah, it's pretty well well marked out too. I mean, you can't really go wrong. You've just got to make sure um, during construct and even before you start building. Like I do recommend going through the instruction book before you even start cutting plastic off the sprues because it's not it's not a straightforward build it's through, throughout the whole instruction manual you're going to have um, and I'm going to use this first page for an example you've got your B options and and then you come down here and this is all in step one so you've got your B options on the on the cabin floor and then and then so you've got um, your seats as well B option through here and then even then they give you different options like um, which is why which is why let me see do, do, do. one says one mil one mil one mil fifteen a two oh, okay so this one so where you where you've got your passenger seats here I zoom in sorry guys you got your passenger seats here they can either face um, lengthways with the helicopter inside the cabin or you can the, op the other option is you can have them facing widthways so yeah like I said you've got to just study instructions and, and also on the back you've got um, the yeah you've got modeler's notes but I generally just scribble down here as I go so I normally have notes as I'm building along Now see all your seat constructions. 
and it's not too hard to understand the Airfix instructions so far. Like I have dealt with model kits instructions, you're just sort of going like, what the heck am I looking at here? But with a bit of planning, and you're normally okay. Yeah, so yeah, so like, I mean, it's nice details in here. Like inside the cabin, if you can see. Like I'm just going to do a quick brief of the instructions because there's over a hundred steps in this thing, so. Machine gun assembly. And I'm not too sure on fit issues, but obviously as I go along, I'm not going to build this for a while because I, like I have a lot of models in my stash, so it's just I'm slowly picking all the nice kits that I think you guys would like to see and the kits that aren't really worth looking at, um, I sort of won't do, but I do have a few kits in my stash and I think it's worth sort of doing a review on them. Yeah, so that's... I mean, you can pause it as... as um, I'll just sort of flick through it, and if you want to pause it and during watching you can sort of have, have a look at it a bit more. Yeah, it's like, yeah, once again, so you've got A option, B option, C option. So even though there's a lot of pages, it's almost this book's divided into three parts, mostly. I mean, even just the drawings, the artwork here, just for the, the actual um, helicopter itself and the cabin, the outside of the fuselage, if you can call it a fuselage, I've always called it a cabin. Um, yeah, you just, it's just nice. It's been, they haven't really cut corners with it. Yeah, just windscreen wiper installation. And obviously you've got your airlift um, assembly here, machine gun assembly. So what do you got here? you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight steps just to build a machine gun. So up to 100, step 104, and then you start putting together the hub for the rotors, the rotor blade assembly. And they give the option too because you've got a, obviously, because of the sea rescue one. And this is, I think, the links. Like, I don't know too much about the links, I um, haven't read too much on it yet. Um, so any ship missile, sea. So I think it's like a more of a navy helicopter. Oh, correct me if I'm wrong. I just leave your comments down below. It's just because I really want to know more, a bit more about it. Um, obviously, you guys in the UK would know more. Um, we don't. Ha I don't think we have these things here in Australia. So yeah. So they give you the option to. Where was I? Where is it? Uh, do and yeah, they give the option here to have you either have the rotor blades folded back or fully extended, ready for flight. So there are different options here. Once again, you've got to look through it and before we start, before we start cutting off all the parts. And yeah, so they give you all the parts too to lock them off. Like you have parts to lock it off on the helicopter itself. Tail boom, tail booms, and including your tail, your fin. I think it was like one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And put it this way: you've got more than eight parts just to assemble the back half of the helicopter, and that's not including all the little, the little tiny fiddly bits. Yeah, so it gives you the option too to. For the main tail rotor, the swing back, lock it off, just to um, conserve space on the um, the ship or the, or the carrier, whatever this thing um, lives on. And just a couple of drawings at the back here, what your options are as well. That's what I mean. You get the options to flick all the ro um, the rotor blades back, and then swing the rotor, the tail rotor inward as well. So that's the instructions. That's that. That's that. Demo behind me. 
and looking through the plastic now. So I've separately bagged all these things. Obviously, when I notice a couple of parts missing, I don't fall falling off the sprue. And yeah, so there's only what do we got here? So this is what basically came out of this kit. So there's obviously one of the landing gears. Um, it's come off. These things, I have no idea what these are at the moment. Um, who knows? But I'll find them, sure enough. So, Start off with the clear parts. Do a bit of chop suey. bit of webbing on this thing on the glass too on the side um, what would these be on the side door um, yeah so if you look at, oh, a bit of glare on that get rid of that doesn't really help yeah don't know if you can see that webbing or not but she sort of runs Where is it? Where are you? Uh, damn. She's a paintbrush. Uh, so if you see, there's actually webbing all along in here, and it's it's. But I guess it is bad. But then if you're not too worried about it. Um, Yeah, like you can you can sort of live with it, but if you're building this for a um, like a competition piece or something, yeah, and obviously you're going to worry about it. And uh, actually, the top glass here for the front for the main windscreen, it's actually really yeah, it's all distorted. But the front windscreen itself's not too bad. There's no webbing on it, no mold lines or anything, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's probably the only issue. Just those side. That's really the only webbing. Oh, is it? Man, let me brush it off. Man, that's just dust. No, it's just these ones. So that's that. Get rid of your in the box. Man. And these bags are great too. Go to your local shop, supermarket, and just get the sna um, snap lock bags there. You know, I just bought the cheapy ones, but always always reusable. I come with a box of twenty for about three three dollars, three or four dollars. Okay, tail boom, and you got under the. So we got here. So this would be under the bottom half of the nose, I think. What it looks like. And straight away, I can say, no flash, which is absolutely awesome. So, that's actually a really nice detail too, like, heaps of riveting, like raised riveting. Um, helicopters do normally have a lot of raised riveting on them. And so if you... If I, Zoom in. Just use the light to reflect off. You actually see the detail. It's really, really nice. Plastic's not too soft or thin. Um, and I have heard that about Airfix kits that the plastic is quite thin, and which is sort of not has sort of made me not buy one or purchase one. But um, but I'm hearing a lot of good things about the the new new Airfix kits with the new tooling. So thought I'd give them a try, and I was actually quite happy with it. Seats, the seat's pretty average. I mean, like, yeah, so I'll probably sand that back. Um, what I actually have started doing, and I don't, no, I can't find it. Um, if you guys 
um, familiar with this. You know, when you open up your, your your chocolate milk powders, like I don't know what brand you guys have overseas, but um, Milo or Ovaltine or just any any chocolate powder you put in your milk. Well, your kids will, if you got kids, you know, you probably know what I'm talking about. The alfoil that that you get off the top after you take the tin off, or the lid off the tin, you got that sort of protective sealant thick foil. Um, keep that because that's um, like too many people throw it away. If you can flatten that right out just by using a, well, I normally use just a piece of wood, or yeah, generally just a piece of wood with a bit of cloth around it, and just sort of whack it on your um, cutting mat. Just flatten it right out, and then you you can start using those basically really thin etch um, fado etch. Like you can cut it out with a pair of scissors. Um, you can cut it with um, a hobby knife or a scalpel. So I'm actually might do that and just yeah, things send them off. But that's just what I thought. I'd chuck that in there. Because I've never actually seen anybody on YouTube like. Um, sh to, like show that tip or even mention that tip. I mean, it's great. You, you can you, well. I'm just getting the next sprue out. You can actually use it for um, putting straps on helmets if you do miniatures, like your army figures and stuff. You know, goggle straps and things like that. So next sprue, which is the D sprue, we have the rotor blades here. Detail's quite nice. So around where you've got all the parts for your rotor on the inner inner rotor blades, as you get closer towards the hub, there's actually really nice raised riveting detail. On these are the parts I'm talking about. I mean, probably they're probably too fine. If you can probably see them there on that angle, like I really hope you can see it because it's actually a nice touch to this kit. Um, Injector pin marks, they're almost non existent on this kit, which is. Yeah, it's really nice. Like, there's hardly any flash, hardly any mold lines. Like, there's probably a little bit of mold line in here, like right on the inside of the um, rotors here. But, I mean, with a flick of your hobby knife on there, you'd. I mean, that'd come straight off. I mean, like, there's absolutely just tiniest, tiny bit of flash on in here, but, I mean, I'm not even going to carry on about it, because it's just so minute that you just go with your um, hobby knife or um, seam line removing tool, then it's gone. Yeah, it's just a really nice kit. I mean, if, if you ever thought about getting... Um, this kit, and you've sort of warmed an R about getting it. I mean, I recommend getting it for the price you pay, for the amount of detail. Give it a go. So, what do we got here? Next one, I'll leave that till last. Um, so, 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 so. Carefully pull it out of the bag. I don't want to break any more parts. Okay. What do we have here? Okay, so we've got some assembly here for the tail back back tail rotor fin. So I'd say this goes, is it? No. It's something else. That's it there. So obviously that's where your back fin goes, or you, and your tail rotor goes on the other side here. So your tail rotor goes here, and then that goes on the other side. And that's where your fin goes. Your stabilizer. Um, got all your bombs here. So like all your anti-ship missiles and things like that. There's your, yeah, there they are there. And what else we got? 
I mean, obviously that's where the other landing gear went, goes on, so the landing gear that came off went on the B-sprue. Be careful. Hence is why Airfix should not single bag all their stuff. If you're watching, don't do it. Do not do it. Please. Yeah, so, yep, once again, no flash. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Ooh, lucky. Yeah, no flash. No mold lines, if any. Like, it's just, yeah. I mean, it's just a really nice, just a really nice kit. Like, it's just very impressed. Very, very impressed. So, and then, onto the last brew. Onto the cab itself. Helicopter cabin. I mean, if you love detail, if you love like washing your models, putting inks and things on these, like this would definitely be a model for you because like the recessed panel lines, the raised detail, it's just everywhere. Like it's, it's, it's almost not one part of this kit that just doesn't have it. Like it's just all they've all got it. Like even it's got some, um, like what would you call that? It's not checker plate, it's um it's like a grilled floor. So so rip it in here. Oop. Rip it in here, you actually see like the what I'm talking about. I mean you might say, oh but that's flat. Spin that part around. There you go. You've got um who knows what that is. Hang on. Yep. I won't find that till I get um to the actual build or the instructions themselves but like I said you've really got to study instructions before you start building and then here you get um, there's your tail boom where is it? oh I missed the spruce on okay. yeah so there's your option for your, your fully extended tail boom and, and that was on do, do, do. your C sprue and this is your A sprue here so this is where you get the option for your folded up um, your back fin there's your tail boom there so you obviously you're going to have parts to um, so it articulates and folds up and I don't know whether I've come across it but I haven't seen it in the dash I mean, I'm just going through this quick, this kit pretty quick, so um, it's already half an hour long. But by the time I chop it down and cut out all the babbling, we should get it down to about 25. So yeah. So if I show the detail of of the cabin itself, I mean, like all the first thing I I said was wow, like it's just really really nice. Like even underneath. The, the recessed panel lines are even all the way through. They don't shallow out. So, I mean, like, really, you shouldn't have to re do much rescribing and re-riveting. Obviously, all the rivets are raised, so... Unless you guys know how to do it, because I obviously don't. And if you do, um, swing me a line, because I'd love to know how you guys do it. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so thanks for watching guys. Hope this review sort of made your mind up on this kit if you ever wanted to get it. And happy modelling, have fun, and don't chop your fingers off with your hobby knife. Thanks guys, catch you later, bye.